Welcome to another lesson in our series Investigating Geometry. My name is Eloise and I'll be working with Sharon and Theodore. In the last lesson, we were given a conjecture about the sum of the angles in a triangle. Then we proved the conjecture using deductive reasoning. We used logical steps that take us from the facts or premises to the conclusion. Today, we're going to see how much fun it can be to make our own conjectures. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to make, explain and prove a conjecture about a polygon. And you should be able to make and prove a generalization about the sum of the interior angles of any polygon. The conjecture about the angles of a triangle was probably not a new idea to you. You've worked with angles of a triangle before, but what about other polygons like quadrilaterals and pentagons? What do you know about a hexagon, a heptagon, an octagon, a nonagon, a decagon and an undecagon? Hey, even a dodecagon! And it doesn't stop there. Polygons can have 20 sides, 30 sides, 100 sides. All these shapes that we haven't explored. Hey, she's right. I mean, we can make up conjectures with these shapes. Perhaps we could find a rule that can deal with shapes that have 100 sides. Wouldn't that be cool? We'd be famous. More famous than Pythagoras ever was. But then, where do we start? How about we start with an easier shape than that one? Like... Yeah, this hexagon here. I'll go with that. But look here, we've got like three hexagons here. Mm -hmm. And what can you say about them? They all have six sides. Well, duh. That's what hexagon means. Six-sided. Okay, Bright Spark. I was getting there. They also have six angles. And I think we should find out what the angles add up to. Like we did with the triangles. Oh, okay. Aren't you lucky I brought it along this protractor? You write down the angles and I'll measure them. Okay. <laughs> Look, they're close to 720 degrees each time. What are you two up to now? Here I was giving you the names of all the different sided shapes and you two are not even listening. I'm sorry, but you gave us a brilliant idea and... We, we thought we should check it out. Oh, and what was this great idea? We thought we could find a rule that could work with a shape with 100 sides. Because if we do that, we could be more famous than that dude. What's his name? That Pythagoras dude. Yeah, we decided to look at the hexagon and make some conjectures. Really? And what have we found so far? So far we found out that in every hexagon, the angles add up to 720 degrees. Okay. And are you ready to make a conjecture about hexagons? Hmm. Okay. I know. I've got it. Our conjecture is all the angles of a hexagon add up to 720 degrees. Are you sure about this? Will your conjecture work for any hexagon? Mm, I'm not sure. Perhaps we should test this. Let's measure these angles of more of these hexagons. <laughs> Now 
now we've really checked lots. I mean, they all add up to a sum of 720 degrees when we are accurate. Good. By inductive reasoning, you have come to a good conjecture. The sum of the interior angles of a hexagon is 720 degrees. But how are you going to get from this conjecture to something about a shape with 100 sides? Hey, leave it to us. We can do it without you. We're on our way to being famous, remember? You are sounding pretty confident. Okay, I'll wait here quietly and watch you reach stardom. Okay, Sharon. So what's the next step to your plan? Well, I reckon that if we do more measuring on shapes that have four sides or five sides, then we'll have something that we compare the hexagon to. We need that so that we can find a rule that could apply to all polygons. Well, Sharon, let's start with the triangle. That's easy. It has three sides and the angles add up to 180 degrees. The next would be a shape with four sides, a quadrilateral, which means that angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. Are you sure about that, Sharon? Yes, of course. Look here. I can make two triangles to form this quad. So that's 180 and 180. Easy. That's 360 degrees. So now, Sharon, we need a shape with five sides, which they call, I remember, a pentagon. Here's one here. Let's check the sides of this pentagon. 540 degrees. Put that into the table. Great. So what does the table tell us now? Hmm. We have four shapes and the sum of their angles. Four shapes should be enough for us to make a rule, I think. It looks like we're adding 180 degrees each time. Hmm, but does that help us? I mean, that helps us find the sum of the next shape. But I'm not planning to keep counting 180s until I get a shape with 100 sides. Now you've really got me there. I'm really stuck. Ah, me too, Joe. Can you give us a hand here, please? Okay. So far, you two are doing well. You've investigated different hexagons and found that they all have the same total for their interior angles. Then you looked at other shapes, the triangle, the quadrilateral and the pentagon. Then you compared the sum of the angles for each shape in a table. Remember that when we just try lots of different examples and keep getting the same results, we're using inductive reasoning. Your table has shown you a pattern, and now you can make a conjecture from that. Now think about this. Using your table, can you find the sum of the interior angles of a polygon with 100 sides? Well, we thought that we could do it. But that's where we got stuck. Hmm. We can't see from the pattern you found how to get to a 100-sided shape. Let's watch this group of learners from a school. They've been battling with the same question. Huh, so long as they don't get it before us. Okay. I use the multiples of four. Kahiso and his group could see from the table that they could add 180 degrees each time to find the total size of the angles of each shape. After getting to a 10-sided shape, a decagon, they knew there was a pattern, but they still didn't have an idea for a formula. Remember that it takes time to do an investigation. You might try a few ideas that don't work before you find one that works. After testing some shapes, they could see that they needed to multiply the number of sides of the shape by 180 degrees. Then Kahiso realized that you had to subtract two from the number of sides. After that, you could multiply by 180. They tested this idea on the decagon, the 10-sided shape. 10 minus 2 is 8. And 8 times 180 gets you 1,440. So their formula worked. Now they still need to find a way to write their formula down using variables. Do you agree with what Samantha wrote there? She wrote, the sum of the angles of a polygon equals n minus 2 in brackets times 180. 
Samantha's proof works for all the shapes they tried it on. So they have proof that this formula works by inductive reasoning. Now I'm going to show you a proof that uses deductive reasoning. It'll prove that this formula works for any shape, no matter how many sides it has. First, I take any polygon. I'm going to choose the pentagon, but it wouldn't matter how many sides the shape has that you choose. Then, put a dot somewhere sort of in the middle of the shape. It's not important exactly where. From that dot, draw a line to each vertex of the shape. How many triangles are there in this pentagon now? One, two, three, four, five. Does this make sense? Let me check if I understand. If I were to draw a hexagon, would it mean that I would get six triangles? Yes. And this octagon over here has got eight sides, which means it should have eight triangles. Yes, it works. There are eight triangles in this octagon. The number of triangles will always be the same as the number of sides of the polygon. See how each triangle is using one side of the original polygon. So we'll get a hundred triangles and my hundred sided shape. Now watch this. We know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees and we have five triangles here. So all these angles in the pentagon will add up to 180 times five. But is this the answer we need for the sum of the interior angles? So we only want the angles around the edge, the interior angles of the pentagon. These angles are all around this point, so they will add up to 360 degrees. Now you are thinking, angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. How does that help us? Well, we don't want those angles. They're not part of the interior angles of a pentagon. So we'll subtract them from 900. And 900 minus 360 gives us 540 degrees, which means the sum of the interior angles of any pentagon equal to 540 degrees. Well done, you two. Did you notice that we used a general pentagon here? We did not measure any angles at all, so this is a proof that is true for any and all pentagons. Now let's go back to the conjecture about the formula for any polygon. Since we know that the number of triangles is always going to be the same as the number of sides of the polygon, then a polygon with n sides will have n triangles. So the total sum of all angles in the polygon will be 180 times n instead of 180 times 6 as we had for the hexagon. But no matter what the polygon, the sum of the angles to be subtracted from this point here remains 360 because it is always a full circle. So our formula is now 180 degrees N minus 360 degrees. I follow you, but that doesn't look anything like the conjectures that we saw earlier on. Yes, but look again. We can factorize our answer. The 180 is common, so we get 180 degrees times N minus 2. And that's exactly what the learners in the class we saw conjectured from the table of values, isn't it? So, now we've proved it. We can use a clever formula to figure out the 100 sided shape. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to get us any famous, you know. I heard that. But before you two run off with my brilliant ideas, let's just make sure that you have the right ideas. 
Can you tell me what you have learned? In this lesson, we made a conjecture about the sum of angles in a polygon. We used algebra and a table of values to prove it for any polygon. Then we also proved it using constructed triangles on a pentagon. We proved that for any polygon, the sum of the interior angles is 180, all multiplied by n minus 2. Well done, but these two methods are not the only ways to prove the conjecture. I think they should be enough to make stars out of you though. You two better get on with your climb to greatness. Thanks. Thanks. See, See ya. ya. As your task for today, find another geometric proof of the conjecture. Here is the conjecture again. The sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 180 multiplied by n minus 2. If you can't think of anything, I suggest you choose a polygon again and construct lines to make simpler shapes that we know about. Well, that's it for this lesson. Keep making conjectures about maths and life and keep trying to prove them. Bye-bye. <laughs>